Hi, I'm Sam from Needcraft and welcome to our YouTube video. Today I'm going to show you how easy it is to make a lampshade in your choice of fabric in the colour that you want from one of our Needcraft professional lampshade making kits. So these are designed and manufactured in the UK but come with a US, Uno and UK fitting. We have a variety of sizes too, so 8, 10, 12, 14, 16 and 18 inch lampshades and I'm going to show you our popular 12 inch lampshade making kit today and how to make that up. So these are absolutely perfect if you're looking for a lampshade to match your interior decor and they can be used with wallpaper or fabrics. They can be used also as a table lamp like the one I've got here or as a pendant lamp that hangs down from the ceiling. These kits are for our US and overseas customers as they can be used with a harp and finial. So all our components and materials are professional quality and are used around the world by many crafters and tradespeople. So first of all, I'm going to show you what's in the box. So just before I open up the box, I just want to take you through some of the details on the front. As I said, we're going to be making up a 12 inch diameter shade today, which is this one here. And in terms of the height of the shade, this is actually eight inches from the top to the bottom. So in terms of coverings that you would need for this, the size you would need is 39 inches by 10 inches. So that's the kind of thing you might have left over if you've made some cushions or some curtains or something you've got sitting in your fabric stash waiting for a great project like this. So let's have a look at what's inside. I'm just going to unpack the box first of all and then take you through each of the components. So it all comes handily packed in this kind of pizza size box, which is great. And first of all, I just want to talk to you about our professional lampshade making PVC. So this is handily wrapped in a polythene cover for you, but I have one here that I've already unwrapped ready for my demo. So first of all, it's really important um, to know that this is professional lampshade making PVC. So it's exactly what you would see on lampshade in an interior store or from wherever you buy your lampshades from. And it's anti-static and anti-yellowing. Very importantly, it's been tested rigorously for fire safety as well. Um, so you know it's exactly the right product to be using for your lampshade. Just to flip it over, you'll see on the back there, it's got um, grid lines. So this is a backing paper and we're gonna reveal this to um, reveal the self-adhesive sticky that we're gonna use to make up our shade. This has been cut to size for you, which is absolutely brilliant. So you don't even need a tape measure for this project. Um, so we've done all the hard work in advance. And just to flip back over to the white side, just along here, you will notice a kiss cut. And if I just bend it back gently, you can see that there is a line that's been scored all the way along the top of the panel and along the bottom as well. And we're going to actually remove that as part of the shade making process. And that basically means you get a really professional lampshade. So that's our lampshade making PVC. Just to talk about the rings, there's two in every kit, and this is called a plain ring. And then you have your utility ring. And the reason it's a utility ring is because it has this centre section, which is what we're going to use to attach to whichever lamp fitting you're using. So at the moment, this is an Uno fitting size, and I'll just grab one to show you. So this is this fitting that you may recognise. So it's the widest of all lamp fittings, and that will fit into there. If you pop in the converter adapter, this will then convert this to a UK fitting. And I've got one already prepared here. So this is the UK fitting inside. So you'll see that that's made that hole quite a bit smaller and that will fit this fitting. So as you can see, a little bit narrower. So that's your UK. Now to convert to the harp and finial that's um, very common in the US, we have these two 
US converter adapters. And I'm just going to pop one on the bottom and one on the top, and they just slot into place really neatly. And I'm just going to grab my harp, and actually I'll just unscrew first. So I'll just do that again. One on the bottom, one on the top. You can see how easy that is. I'm just going to pop that on top of my harp, screw that back in place. And if you can imagine, then you've got your shade made, this will then cover the bulb. So it covers all three systems, which is fantastic. So I'll just unscrew that again. There we go, and pop that on there. And in terms of the other materials that you get inside of your kit, we've got our double-sided high-tack tape. Now, this is essential to the lampshade making process. It's what holds your kit together, basically. And as you can see from just the movement I'm doing there, it's really super flexible. So it's very tacky indeed, really sticky product. And it's not red, it's actually clear. And we're going to remove the red backing at various stages through the demonstration. There's enough on here to make up your lampshade and you usually have a little bit left over as well. So other things in your kit, you have this little tool and you might not have ever seen one of these before. This is a rolled edge tool and it has a point here at the top and then it has two long smooth sides and then a serrated edge. And this is for the final stage of our demonstration today. And this is what gives us this super crisp, lovely, clean edge at the top of our lampshade. So we're going to use this tool to tuck all the excess fabric underneath to finish our shade off. So as with all of our products, we also have our professional lampshade making kit instructions. And these have photographs all the way through, lots of hints and tips on here as well. Actually double-sided, takes you through step-by-step step how to make up your shade. So if you're not sure, obviously you're watching this video of how to do this, but you can refer back to this as well. Okay, in terms of other things that you might need, it really is a kitchen table craft. So it's the kind of thing you may already have crafting materials at home to make. You need a clean flat surface so you can use kitchen table. You might have a craft station and um, just a clean flat surface is all you need. Pair of dressmaking scissors because we're going to be cutting fabric. Um, so you could use a rotary cutter and I've got a cutting mat on here as well. So do make sure you protect your surface if you're using a rotary cutter or a craft knife. And then I always have a little pair of tape scissors and these are just to snip the tape. It's because I'm a bit precious about my dressmaking scissors. And if you're a crafter, you'll know that you don't want sticky residue of tape on your lovely dressmaking scissors. So just always have a little pair of household scissors handy. If you have one, this is a really useful tool and it's optional, you don't need one, but this is a seam roller. So it just helps when we're closing up the, up the shade to just roll that seam close. But like I say, optional, you may not actually have one at home. And if you haven't, don't worry. Okay, so we're going to move on to how to make up our shade now. So I'll just get myself sorted out here and just pop a few things away. So I just want to chat with you about fabrics as well and what you might um, use as your covering. So I have here, and I'll just lift this up, a really nice craft cotton. And we do recommend that you use woven fabrics for this uh, lampshade making kit. The reason is, is that stretch fabrics just won't work um, because they're too stretchy. So you can go with a lightweight cotton, like a craft cotton, um, cotton or a dressmaking cotton through to a kind of medium upholstery weight would work perfectly and that really can be any fabric that you chose you choose as long as it's woven um, and that means that you're getting exactly the shade that you want so that's the brilliant thing about these kits so I have already pressed my fabric and um, I've made sure it's not got any creases in it at all and you just need to lay that on your surface face down so your pattern will be touching the table and then I've just simply laid uh, my panel here with the backing paper face down as well. 
So just to chat about the patterns on fabrics, I have a non-directional fabric here. I'm going to talk to you again about this a little bit later. So this, it, this uh, fabric has no direction whatsoever, but it does have quite a kind of symmetrical pattern on it. So I am just going to make sure I just get that laid out properly. I'm just going to move it up slightly. I'm going to make sure that I'm lining up my pattern with the edge here, with the top of my PVC panel. So yeah, I'm happy with that and that looks great. So we're on to making up our lampshade now. First stage is to simply take the backing and peel that away. This can often be the most difficult bit, the <laughs> stubborn pulling it away, but there we go. And I'm just revealing about two to four inches of that. So it doesn't have to be too precise. And basically that's how I'm going to start making my shade. So I'm just going to very gently lay that down onto my fabric. And I'm just going to use my fist to push that into place. And what that means is we've started now. So that's now adhering to our fabric. And I'm popping my left hand underneath and just pulling again around about two to four inches away and the same again. So you can kind of see the pattern already of how we're going to adhere the PVC to the fabric. And the same again, just keep pulling away. There we go. And just keep pulling that down and rubbing into place. And this is just creating our outer of our lampshade. And there we go. And that's all done now. I'm just going to pop that away. So we've adhered our lampshade making PVC to our fabric. I always flip over. And what I do is I just make sure it's all adhered. This is just in case you have a fabric that has a few frays on. And if they get caught underneath, you might not have seen them. And um, then it can create a little bit of a lump and you don't want that. So this is just almost a pre-check before we go any further. So I am really happy with that and how it looks. That's great. Okay, so that's our fabric adhered. We're now going to take our dressmaking scissors and we're actually going to cut that out. So I'm going to start here on the long edge and I'm just using the edge of the PVC as a guide. So I'm simply just using kind of quite large motions, opening up my scissors just to make it a bit easier. And if you kind of get there, I've got a little bit of a fray and a little bit of excess, don't worry because you're not going to see any of this at all. So we're just using the PVC edge as a guide and this will create a really lovely margin for us. And as I said before, it's all measured out for you. It's really made very easy in terms of putting together and you'll be so surprised, such a fantastic looking lampshade. And if you are a creative person, you can obviously print your own fabric, um, you could actually hand print it, um, you could design it yourself, you know, there's no end of possibilities and what you can do with this. So I'm just going to also cut the short edges now. So just nice and close to the edge there. There we go, and I'll just cut those little pieces off. And then we'll just do the other long edge. So 12 inches is our most popular selling shade in the UK and Europe. And just because it works really well for a table lamp or as a pendant lamp. But obviously um, you can go smaller or bigger and the eight inch is the smallest we have in our US range and the um, 18 inch is the largest. So you have a choice of sizes as well, which is great. 
And it just really depends on the kind of size of room you've got or the size of lamp base. So you can pick out exactly what you want. So just onto the final short edge. There we go. Okay, I'm just going to get rid of that. So that's our panel all cut out. So that's our PVC sorted. And what we're going to do just before we finish up is we're going to just break back the kiss cut. You just have to be very gentle when you're doing this. So we're just going along. The thicker the fabric, um, it will sort of crack open almost. Now this is fairly thin fabric, so I'm just, oh, there we go. We've had a little crack open. So we're just folding it back and I'll just fold it back into position. And then the same along the other side, just really gently pushing back. And we're going to remove these kiss cuts now and that will give us our perfectly measured fabric margin. So just a little tip is if you're struggling to pull this away, if you just pull up one, one side and push down the other, you're almost kind of creating a little bit of push between the two, then it will come away. And my tip here is don't rush just pull really gently. Now I've got a fabric that's fraying a little already and I don't want to reduce that margin too much. So I'm just simply pulling away really, really slowly and gently. And any frays that do come, I'm just gonna simply snip off with my dressmaking scissors. Just pull that away. And then the same on the other side. So again, I'm just gonna lift up and push down and that creates a little crack and an opening and just going to pull away. So just nice and slowly. There we go. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, just because I have got a little bit of fraying going on, is I'm just going to snip them away. I think that's okay, just one more there. It's just good to kind of tidy up those bits. Brilliant. Okay, and just before we finish with the panel, we've just got one more stage. We're gonna take our double-sided tape and at the short end, I always work on my right hand side. Um, I'm right handed and that helps me. You might prefer to work on the left, but I'm just going to take the tape and then just simply run a line of it along the edge there. Now a tip here is not to stretch it. Don't pull it really hard. We just want the tape to lay on there because if you pull it really hard, the PVC will start to curl a little bit and we don't want that. So I'll just show you once I've snipped this away, just to be sure where it is. So that's literally sitting on the PVC, not on the fabric. And it's starting at the top on the short end and ending at the bottom on the short end. And that's actually going to be our seam when we close up our lampshade. So I'm done with the PVC for the moment. And we're going to move on to working with the rings. So taking our double-sided tape again, we're going to pop the tape on. And you can see there that the ring is in the centre of the two edges of the tape. Now, it doesn't need to be exactly perfect. So it's just roughly in the middle. And the way I do this is I simply, about two inches at a time, just rolling it out gently, adding it on to the frame and just working my way around slowly. And if you kind of go a little bit wobbly, you can just simply pull it back and do it again. So it's really quite forgiving. And then just keeping going round until you reach where you started. 
And just another little tip here is, I always leave a little gap just between the two tapes, the two ends. And there's two reasons for that. Uh, one is you can find it really easy when we come to the next stage and we have to take the backing paper off. And also if they overlap, it can be really difficult to then undo the backing paper. So that, you know, just kind of takes those problems away. So I'm just simply pushing with my fingers and thumbs. And as you can see, I'm rolling the tape around. So that's coating the ring as much as possible. It won't meet on the other side, so don't worry about that. It's not supposed to go all the way round, but I'm just simply rolling it round. And that means that this is as tacky as it possibly can be to make up our shade. Okay, so I've done now the plain ring. I'm gonna go and do exactly the same thing on our utility ring. So I'll just get it started. There we go, you can see that again, just the ring is sat in the centre. I'm pulling away around about two inches at a time. And just moving it round gently. And I'm nearly back to where I started. And again, just that little tip of snipping and leaving a little gap there so the white shows through. Same again, fingers and thumbs. We're just pushing it round as much as possible. There we go, nice and easy going round. Brilliant. There we go. So that's all that done. So that's that stage finished. So just before we start rolling the rings, we just need to think about if you have a fabric with a direction. And a good example of that is this one here with the houses on it. So obviously they need to be the right way round on your shade. So when you're making a shade for the US, you will need to make sure if this is say a directional fabric and it isn't actually, but say you had flowers or even houses like there is on this shade here, going upwards like this. And I'll just fold this so it's like a lampshade then you would have your plain ring on the bottom and your table um, lampshade, so the utility for the table lampshade at the top. So that would be the same for whether you're making a table lampshade or a pendant lampshade. If you're using one of the other fittings, the UNO fitting or the UK fitting, you will just need to think about where the utility ring will be positioned to get the fabric direction correct. So just something to consider while you're making up. So I'm actually going to move to the side of the table and I'm going to first of all lay my uh, PVC on the table and I'm just going to remove the backing tape from the seam. Just lift in the red, the backing off and then I'm just going to put my rings either side of it. Now if I had a directional fabric I would put my rings on the side that it was supposed to be on so that I don't forget. I'm going to remove the backing tape from these and just going back to my little gap, really easy to spot because we've not overlapped our tapes. So I'm just going to take it off the utility first and the reason is, is because then you can pop that on the table and it doesn't stick to anything. And then we're going to take it from this one and once we've done this then we need to start rolling. So just remove from there as well and it is quite tacky this so if you have particularly long hair my advice is tie it back because we are going to be leaning over don't want you to get your hair stuck in there as well so let me just move to the end and I'll show you what we're going to do so looking at the utility ring just something important about this what we don't want is the spoke to sit on the seam so just use anywhere in the gaps between the spokes to sit onto the PVC. And we're actually sitting onto the PVC and leaving a tiny, tiny margin there. So we're just getting that into position, ready to roll. And then we do the same with our plain ring on the other end. And just to know, we're sitting it onto the PVC. We're not sitting onto the fabric. So that's quite important. And again, just getting that ready. So we're not over the edge and we're not in the middle, we're just on the PVC and we've just left a tiny gap along here. So I've just got those ready and already you can see that the tape is doing its job. 
and I'm just going to very gently roll and we're not pushing down hard here we're letting the tape do its job and we're simply rolling I'm actually pulling this towards me a little bit as I'm doing it and as you can see rather than rolling from the top which is what I did initially I'm now using my hands at the bottom just easier to guide into place so just making sure and if they go off and you're not happy just pull them back really straightforward so just rolling I've gone off a little bit there and it does happen so I'm just going to go back again keeping my eye on both of them making sure that they're rolling and you kind of find yourself going from one to the other and just getting them lined up. I've gone off a little bit there, so I'm just going to roll back. And then once you get, again, around about two to four inches from the end, then I'm actually just going to come back around the other side of the table and turn it towards me. So when we've got to this stage, I'm going to now close the seam, which we've already put the double sided tape on. But something again, a little tip to look out for is just make sure that this part here, where the seam is, all lines up. So it, it really is nice and flush. And again, really professional. So I'm just going to, yeah, I'm happy with that. And very, very gently, and I'm not pushing down with the palm of my hands. I'm literally using my fingertips, just securing that down. And then you can turn that so that the seam is on the bottom. You can give that a good run down with your thumb fingers there and if you have one you can use your seam roller at this point just allows you to have a little bit more pressure on that seam great okay so now it's starting to look like a lampshade which is really exciting um, so you can see how quickly it's coming together so before we go any further we're just going to do a little trick on your seam here you will have an overlap of fabric so you'll have around um, just it's under an inch just a small amount of fabric that's overlapping and what we want to do is just cut that fabric away so i'll just do this so it's nice and clear i'm literally using the tips of my scissors here and i'm just cutting in and then cutting away and you can just see on the palm of my hand how small that piece of fabric is and it's just so we don't have double fabric to tuck over. It just makes it easier. I'm going to repeat again on the other side. So just folding down the seam there so you can see. Just using the tips of my fabric and just cutting that away. So now we're ready for the next stage. And we're nearly finished, actually. We've not got much to go at all. So I always start on the inside seam. It's just a bit more methodical and we're just going to push the fabric down and it's kind of the same movement we used with the tape. We're just going to push that down and into place. And the tackiness underneath there of the tape will hold that in place. I've just got a bit of a fray there, so I'm just going to get rid of that. Okay, so just pushing that down and this is creating this really professional edge along the top that really makes it look just like a shop bought lampshade, but actually you've made it yourself, which is, is great. So I'm just pushing that down and that sets us up for the next stage. So just making sure it's nice and clean along the top. Okay, and then turning over and we're gonna do exactly the same on this side. Again, just a little fray there I'm gonna get rid of. So I don't want you to worry about the spokes at this point because we're going to deal with them shortly. So when you just go around the spokes, just again pushing down. And if you make more than one shade, you really get used to this movement because it's a, it's a really essential part of making the shade is just making sure at these stages we're getting the fabric where we want it to be and the tape where we want it to be. Fantastic, okay. So, 
I'm just going to take my rolled edge tool and I talked to you about this at the beginning of the demo. So we have the pointed top here, the two long sides and the serrated edge. And this is what we're going to use to get the excess fabric that we've just tucked over underneath the rings. So I'm going to start at my seam, which is here. And again, I'm going to go in, starting at the inside seam, and I'm very gently going to start pushing the fabric underneath. Now, you'll hear that cracking sound, or I hope you can hear it, um, and when you do this yourself, you definitely will, and that is just basically the tape starting to give way and allowing that fabric to be tucked underneath. So the crack is just the kind of it, it opening effectively, and because we didn't push on our rings really hard, then it's easier for us to do this. If you do press down on the rings, you might find this a bit more tricky. So it's just about being gentle. And I've been fairly firm with this. You don't want to be so firm that you push and it pops out the other side and makes a hole in the fabric, but it's just finding the right level of firmness for you. So we're just pushing it underneath and you can see how easily that's going underneath. using the point that's just my personal preference but you can use the serrated edge too and that's really good for if you want to just kind of put a swathe of fabric kind of halfway in it's just allows you to push that into place great if you've got a slightly thicker fabric as well and I tend to use the long side to just kind of swoosh any little frays in and under and um, so you just have to find your groove really with this. So we're already really nearly round to the beginning. And I'm just gonna do one last double check, make sure there's no frays. And just check, yep, there's one. I'm just gonna swoosh that underneath. Brilliant. So that's one side done already. So that's our plain ring side. And now we're gonna go on to the side with the utility ring and the spokes. So just how to do the spokes, you simply take your dressmaking scissors and lift the fabric and cut. So I'm going to cut just using the tips of my dressmaking scissors and I'm lining them up with the spoke. So that means I almost create a little pair of curtains as I like to call them and they just like sit on either side of the spoke. So I'm just going to go round and do the others as well. So snipping in and then pushing down around the spoke. And then for my final one, just going to cut in, push down around the spoke. There we go. And then that means I'm ready to start tucking in. So I'm going to go back to my seam. And this way, I'm, this time I'm working this way round. And if you're um, rolled edge tool is getting a little bit um, bent, what you can do is take your tape scissors and just cut a section away, brand new point, which is great. So I'm just going to use the point again, there we go, and that's sliding under really nicely. And when you come to your spokes, I use the long side. What I tend to do is go behind it and push under, and that just means they both go in neatly together just seems to work a little bit better. And some fabrics go under much easier than others. It's really interesting once you've made a few lampshades, you kind of learn which ones slide under. Um, cottons tend to be grey, and as do kind of uh, thicker fabrics as well. So, but the, the, the key is, is not to press too hard on the rings, and it just makes this so much easier, so. And also, I'm just, with this hand, I'm just simply holding the frame. I'm not pressing down too hard. I'm almost just using this as a little clamp, really, and it's this hand that's doing all the work. So I'm coming up to a spoke again. I'm just going to repeat that, pop that underneath. Just using the long edge there to get all the fabric underneath. And I'm already back round to the beginning. There we have it our professional lampshade 
making kit. I think you'll agree that that's absolutely lovely. I've now got a pair that I can put in my home. And speaking of pairs, we actually do these in the twin pack. You can buy two shades of the same size in the same pack, which is really good value for money. But it also means if you have two pendants hanging in a room or two lamp bases, you really want to liven up a sideboard or a table then you can get matching lampshades so um so yeah so i'm really really pleased with this and you can see how straightforward and easy it is to do and i'd love you to have a try at using the kits at home so at Neatcraft, we offer plenty of support for you as well, and that's technical support and creative ideas. You can find us on social media at Instagram, Facebook, Twitter and Pinterest, or you can check out our blog at donnellsblog.com, which is packed full of inspirational ideas, educational tips, creative tutorials, and also small business advice. We also have a brilliant Facebook group of lampshade makers who are always willing to answer questions and help with their knowledge and support. So we'd love you to um, make one of our single packs or twin packs, and you can find them both on amazon.com. We can't wait to see what you're going to make with our professional lampshade making kits. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you soon.